Hi guys, Yuli here. Um, I'm going to share, it's a rather in total lengthy tale, but it's a tale about deep heart healing and about self-worth and um, my healing journey. And I tell it with the intention of being a way shower for you guys in case you experience any of this. Um, maybe throw out some referrals for you and um, help to be a guide in some way. Maybe you can draw something from it. If it resonates, it resonates. If not, leave it for somebody else. So I'm going to break it up into a few different stories. But the first one starts, um, I've been having some excruciating heart pain. And yes, I have already gone to the doctor. The doctor says everything is just great with my heart. Um, it's outstanding. But um, I have felt this before. And so I, um, I knew that it was energetic. I knew that it was downloads. I knew that it was deep heart activation. It was deep heart wisdom that was bubbling up. But I just could not seem to get down to it. And so I... Um, you know, I just kept leaning in, just keep leaning in, leaning in and listening. And last Sunday came around and I didn't really know what I was going to do with myself. I saw a post that Lakota One Heart was going to be in town and she was going to be giving a talk at Fellowship of the Inner Light. Well, I go there sometimes and I had hear, heard about Lakota One Heart. She kept coming up in conversations that I needed to go to her events. But my, it just did it wasn't scheduled you know, to be in alignment. It just wasn't time. Well, this was the time because I needed what she had to say. And I needed to meet who she had with her. And so, which I didn't know at the time. So I went to hear this Lakota One Heart. My heart was hurting. I needed to hear what she had to say. And she had a beautiful message. And as soon as I saw the person that was with her, um, I recognized him from a past life or many more past lives. Um, so I recognized him as a friendly. And um, so later that afternoon, anyway, that's about that. And then later that afternoon, Spirit had guided me uh, to my appointment early, which then I ended up going then to the Oriental Gardens where I found a rose. And then, you know, fast forward through time, the next day, um, after work, I just felt like I needed, I still needed something. My chest was still hurting. Um, I had tuned into Mother Mary during the church, um, service. And... It actually was feeling a bit tighter. It was feeling worse. Um, and I knew that it had to do with love. I knew that my, my heart was receiving more love in a sense. It seemed like, I felt like it was the Grinch, you know? My heart was growing or something. I don't know, but. Okay, so I went to the ARE after work and I called on Mother Mary, I called on Yeshua, Jesus, and um, Mary Magdalene. And because my chest was like really, really hurting. It seemed like it was even more after Sunday that my chest was just really, like I could barely breathe. And if I sneezed, oh gosh, it was really painful. Um, it hurt to laugh. It hurt to move. Um, and so, yeah, I needed to call in the trips. I needed, I needed some sending up all the flares. So as I walked up the steps to the labyrinth, there again was another rose. So another sign that Mother Mary was there. And I was like, oh, thank gosh. Thank goodness. Thank you, Lord. And um, so I got up to the labyrinth. And I said, okay, guys, what is this? What is happening with my heart? How do I heal it? Is there some sort of, is it some sort of light codes? Is it some way that you can like send the light codes down so that they would be easier for my body to take in? 
Um, is this there's something that I need to just breathe through? How do I work with this? Do I drink more water? What's, what's, what's up? And so as I started to walk, I started to see my heart. And I saw that it was in a container that was way too small. It was almost like it was like in like a ball of bark or like a coconut shell. And, but it was like slimy, had this black alien slime on it. And it was cracked. And that was part of the pain. Another part of the pain was just that it was just way too small. And my heart was trying to beat out of it because I was receiving more light codes through the shell, but my heart was expanding and it couldn't because the shell was still there. So the shell was the resistance and it was gnarly and it was nasty and like an alien egg that just didn't want to release. And so as I walked the labyrinth, I kind of half expected that the shell would just go ahead and release already, but it didn't. It just kind of like, like it pulled apart, but it just wouldn't come completely undone. My heart was feeling a little bit better, so there was some relief. But then I was guided to go down to the meditation garden and sit by the water. The water has the wisdom and the medicine, you know, to help with the emotional body. And the emotional body that kind of really helps us to heal because there's things that need to be released through water and really sometimes that's the only way that they can be released and so there I went I went to the meditation garden then once I arrived there I found me a nice spot with the sun on my face and I listened to the water, received the medicine and the wisdom of the water that was falling. I had like a little water feature, a waterfall. And there were plants all around. And uh, I felt safe and there was nobody else there. And I heard, uh, say your affirmations, say them out loud. And I said, okay, I am love. That one felt great, I felt empowered. I said, I am loved. That one wasn't as empowered. That one was a little bit softer. And then I said, I am worthy of love. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, here came the tears. And um, I said, I, I said, aha, there it is. There's what, what I needed right there. And so I said it again, I am worthy of love. 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 I deserve love. It is my birthright to be loved. We are all loved and I am loved. And it got easier and easier. It's still a little difficult, but, um, that is at least where I found what was ailing me, was I was sitting in lack, deep, deep rooted lack, surrounded of within uh, of round love, that apparently I did not believe that I deserved love. I did not believe that I was worthy of love. There was shame, there was judgment, um, all the jails. You know, so there's judgments, there's assumptions, there's inventions, and there's lies. So all of those things I was sitting in. Okay, so there we had the root of the problem, or so we thought, or so we thought. More will be revealed. And so I start talking with this healer, with Wes, who I had met at the uh, Fellowship of Inner Light at the Lakota One Heart Talk. And I start talking to him about quantum healing. And like, what is it? Is it basically, a, you know, Reiki on steroids? And he's like, no, not really. I mean, yes, but no. And so he was describing it to me and explaining that he would have to go open my energy and be in my energy 
and um, that was scary for me, not going to lie. Um, that was going to require a lot of trust on my part because my energy is sacred. Everybody's energy is sacred. But, you know, there are a lot of charlatans out there. Not that I felt that he was a charlatan by any means. But there are dark forces that want to steal your light. And I just had to make sure that he was not going to be one of them. You know, there are energy vampires and you know, how terrible would that be to be in the midst of an energy vampire who just basically fillets you open and basks around in your light and your energy. That would be absolutely mortifying. But um, I recognized him from the past life, so that was, you know, really, really important. That was an integral piece of the puzzle here. An integral, I needed it to be somebody who I knew, somebody who... I trusted someone who I felt so comfortable with that I would allow them into my energy field and to release full control to them and trust that my guides who are a big and beefy and amazing, you know, of course I had them standing by and, um, and so, yeah, so I agreed to schedule a healing with Wes Coons, a VB healer, in case you want to check him out on Instagram. He's VB healer, and I'm not sure. He might have a YouTube. You can check that out, too. I know he has a, a podcast that um, is also pretty wonderful. I'll give a shout out about that. His podcast is called enlightenment unknown life of the spiritual nomad some really interesting things in there you might find something um, helpful so um, anywho so we're now to the point where I'm gonna receive this healing and I go through it and I'm trusting and I'm I said a prayer to to God's source the Creator, to Yeshua, Archangel Michael, I called in, I called in Archangel Metatron, I called in my entire Council of Light that I am a part of, I called in Lady Ishtar, and to be with me and to guide and to facili help facilitate make sure that nothing was cut or removed that i will need uh, for my own soul growth and for my mission missions and um and to just keep a watchful eye and so while i did trust wes i you know would be foolish to not have along my own entourage of spiritual companions and my team of spirit and, uh, and so, yes, so the whole time, Yeshua and Mary Magdalene were there with me. I kept hearing uh, from, I don't know, it was like an overtone of sound of a voice saying, look how Yeshua loves Mary Magdalene and how she was a whore, a prostitute, and how, you know, how their love grew and how they loved each other, whatever your belief may be. I'm going based off of what's in my heart and what is in material that I was guided to read um, about them. And, and so, yes, I prefer to believe that they had a beautiful relationship and that... Um, you know, Jesus loved her very much and that he did not judge her. And so that helped quite a bit. I felt that it was very important that it was uh, Wes also doing this healing because this healing was going to be healing sexual traumas from past relationships um, in this incarnation and in past on all timelines. And maybe even ancestral wounds 
And I felt it was important, my soul felt it was important, my guidance team felt it was important, that it be a man. And like I said, it needed to be someone who I trusted, who I knew from before, who I had um, a very loving and wonderful relationships with in past lives. And at least that's how I felt and feel. And um, so all of that helped me to just relax into it. I won't go into the specifics of it all because that will get really, really lengthy. So, but then after the healing is where all of the magic really happened for me. Okay, so after the healing, I was guided to go uh, lay on the sand uh, with Grandmother Ocean. Granted, I went to the bay, technicality. Um, to be in the salt air near the salt water, albeit I was not getting in, it was dark, and um, just lay under the stars. And so as I did that, I thought I had seen what I thought was a spaceship. And I was feeling very isolated. I was feeling very alone. I was feeling very vulnerable. I had just had, um, you know, a lot of things, a lot of energies that had been with me for a long, long, long times, many years, many lifetimes, in fact, um, pulled out of me, ripped out of me. Um, and I was feeling very like a hollow bone. I was feeling like a raw nerve. I was feeling everything. I was feeling the wind. I was feeling like, you know, sensations, of course, but everything through my, all of my energetic field, through my emotion, all my bodies, my emotional body, my etheric body, my aura body, all the bodies, I was feeling everything. And so I was feeling very alone. And uh, I saw what to me looked like a spaceship, but it was probably like a hovercraft. But um, it only had three lights and it was hovering really low. And then it had this big wide beam of light that came down over the water and shone down. And at that moment that I saw that beam of light, I got excited. I was like, oh my God, yes, they've come. They're gonna take me away. They're gonna take me home and um, you know, I know that maybe to some of you it might sound kind of silly and ridiculous, but that is immediately what came up for me. And um, then I realized it probably not. So they then the light went away and they decided to move on. And I was like, oh, but wait, you know, come back. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired of, you know, the mission is really big. And um, yeah, so um, I laid there for a while and then I moved on, moved back home uh, and sat in meditation. And that's when the flood of tears came. Flood of tears, flood of tears, flood of tears for hours. And I felt my heart, I felt my heart was so open, so cleaned out so pure and so radiating, so much love. Um, but I didn't feel anything coming back. And that was so painful. And I saw a vision of myself naked on a desert and there was a sandstorm that was blowing me and I'm like curling up into a little ball, but like standing because getting down low was like not an option because then I'd be closer to the sand and I couldn't lift up off the sand and it was just blasting all around me. I was just getting completely sand blasted and I was so alone. It was like it, was like it zoomed out like as if it was a movie. It zoomed way out and I could see all around me was just completely empty and it was just this big dust devil just, you know, whirling around me and attacking me from all sides and you know I mean I don't know I you know Death Valley sort of comes to mind but I also keep getting images of um, Jesus in the desert from his 40-day fast so I don't know I did just say dust devil 
those words just came out of my mouth. I wasn't really thinking about that, but you know, it all comes out when it's supposed to come out. And so, um, yeah. And then I saw like my soul just like screaming. Like I just saw myself going, <sighs> like, but really loud. In fact, I even like whisper screamed because I live with amongst others. Can't just let out a blood curdling scream. But yeah, it was like a heart, like screaming from my heart, just, <sighs> just screaming, just screaming, screaming, screaming and uh, excruciating. Um, so this doesn't really sound very desirable, I, I imagine, but uh, I knew that it was, it's necessary because this was ages of healing that had been done things that needed to be released. And, you know, I'm here to do the work. I'm not here to be mamby pamby. I'm not here to be, uh, you know, a wallflower. So I'm gonna do it. And so I, I jumped all in and I, I stayed in that dust devil and I, you know, screamed my lungs out. And after it was done, I sat there curled in a ball and I was sobbing and crying and it's an ugly mess. Healing is not beautiful. It is not for the faint of heart. Um, but on the other side, you have liberation and you have freedom and you have so much joy and so much, so much love, which we'll get to. Um, so then, the next morning I woke up, I did my rituals. Every morning I do the Kabbalistic cross, declaring my divinity. And I do the middle pillar of light. And I also do the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagrams, calling in the angels, my council of light, and some other guides of mine. And as I was calling in the angels, I definitely quadruple called in some Raphael. I triple called in some Michael, double called in some Gabriel, and I also called in Uriel. And uh, it was needed. So yeah, so I knew that this day was gonna be really difficult. Uh, I was today, that day I was going fishing with my father and my brother. So a couple of masculines and you know, I didn't know how I was going to do because my brother always asks, how am I doing? And <laughs> you know, I'm going through this big major monster healing, crying my eyeballs out. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to be able to tell. My father is really sensitive uh, to my emotions and um, he's going to pick up on it and he's going to ask and neither one of them are uh, awakened folks. So I can't necessarily say, oh, well, this healer did this mojo on me as making me cry my eyes out. You know, they'd be gunning for, <laughs> gunning for his life. <laughs> so, um, once I got there though, I realized, okay, well, this is all perfect because, um, it was supposed to be a sunny day and it turned out to be kind of misty. So it felt like it was like salt mist that was cleansing my aura and coming down on me. And I was there on a long pier. So I was there surrounded by ocean, grandmother ocean. Um, so I knew, okay, well, this is part of the healing. Then um, someone had caught a sea turtle, which is very, seemed very rare. I had never seen that before and we took part in the rescue. Well, I had been seeing a lot of sea turtles, um, which I know I live near a coast, but I've been seeing them in other people's tarot readings and oracle readings and just all over the place, sea turtle energy had been popping up for me. So anyway, that was a sign. And um, it ended up getting kind of just really nasty weather out. So. Dad said, we're gonna just pack it up and go home. And I was like, well, thank goodness, cause I can't hang on any longer. So I went home and almost all day, 
I was crying, crying, crying. I had decided that I was going to take this um, rewilding from Sabrina Lynn, uh, do this practice that she had offered on YouTube. I can also put a link for that as well if she has it posted. And it was actually calling in the energy of Mary Magdalene and the Magdalene Rose and its deep heart energy. And so we were envisioning this light expanding our heart and even more. And so I was like, oh great, here we go. And as soon as I did, you know, I just kept feeling this, I kept feeling like I was so alone. I was so isolated that I had nobody like, who can I call and talk to about this? Um, I just didn't feel like there was anybody. I didn't want to, I don't know, I just felt like I didn't want to be a burden. I didn't want to bog anybody down. Um, this is my, my journey and I needed to do it and, you know, I'm strong enough, I can do it. So I leaned in on some, I did that activation and, and something she said was very profound to me was, you know, I just kept feeling like I, I have all this love to give and that I give all of this love and I give it so freely to everyone. Um, and I just don't feel like, I wasn't feeling like I was getting anything back. Not that you should expect it, but I felt like I was starting to operate from an empty cup. And that I was not really feeling very fulfilled. And again, I went back to that. I'm like, well, you know, I, I did those mantras. I said that I was you know, worthy of love. I, I did this healing, but now I feel like I have even less love. But what happens when you say that you have less of something or that you don't have something? What is that operating out of? That is operating out of lack and a lack mindset. So to say that you don't have something, you're only going to get more of that. And I was getting that exponentially. I mean, it was bombarding me from all sides of, you know, loneliness and aloneness, which there are two different things, and isolation. And, you know, I kept having these dark thoughts of nobody loves you and nobody cares and nobody wants to hear about your journey and nobody, um, you know, you're, you're doing this all on your own. And, um, you know, I just didn't want to believe that. I did not want to believe that. I also kept feeling like when I was standing up and standing in my power and doing these uh, practices through this workshop, I also kept feeling kind of like something chopping at my knees, like trying to get me to bend my knees down, like to, to have me down, back down on my knees. And I refused. I absolutely refused. I said, no, I'm standing, I'm standing in my power and um, there's nothing you can do about it. Go away. And I just focused more on that love. And what she had said, sorry, she had said is, you give love, you receive love. 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 And I kept saying, no, I give love that I'm not receiving. And, but that's me. That was me not allowing me to receive. And, but you know, I wasn't seeing that at the time and I just started crying again. And I was like, but I'm not, why am I not? Why do I not feel it? And so after that practice, I still was crying, still crying, still crying, still crying. And what she kept saying over and over still was resonating with me. It just wasn't hitting home. I mean, it, it's like it was tickling of home, but it was not quite home. And so I drew an Oracle card, <clears throat> the card Anna, Mary's mother had come out and she was with me and uh, that made me cry more, but more of, you know, I felt my spirit team around me. I felt my spirit team holding me in this beautiful, radiant white blanket of light. And I just kept feeling like, you know, why can it not be 
a person? Why can it not be people holding me? Why can it not be um, physical touch? I was craving it, craving, 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 just being held. And uh, the next card that came out was call on your or soul tribe. You don't have to do it alone. And it had two women facing each other and they were dressed in white. Well, that was an instant uh, sign that I, you know, hey, I'm being a stubborn head. I need to call on, I have people who do love me. I have a team. I have a family. I have a soul family. I have a Reiki family who loves me and um, I'm going to call on them. And so as soon as I sent the text of, hey sisters, I'm going through a really powerful healing right now and having a lot of release um, in the dark. Can you please shine some light and some love um, to assist? And immediately, like immediately, as soon as I sent that text, one of them responded absolutely with a big heart and I could feel it. And then the next one, absolutely, it's on its way and I could feel it. And a third one came through with a, um, a little meme that said, faux show. And, uh, and then, so that was on its way. And then I felt, yes, I am loved. Looky there, Yuli, you are loved. And by humans, it's not just divine that loves you, it's these humans. And so I then felt the love of my sisterhood. I took a nice salt bath and that was cleansing and healing. I got a check-in from my healer and that was comforting and nourishing and warm and wonderful as well. And uh, I mean, this whole experience has just been incredible. So now we get to the good gravy of, you know, this morning I had a realization as I was awaking, I still had my peepers closed and I'm laying there and I'm thinking about the sequence of events that has transpired and how, um, how beautiful this whole healing, healing experience has been. And getting down to the main nitty gritty root of it was that it was all me. It was all me. It was that I had built up such a resistance that I was resisting love. I was not allowing it in. I was not, I, uh -uh, there was absolutely no effing way love was getting to me. No, I would rather sit in my suffering. I would rather sit in that isolation. I would rather sit in the muck and the mire and the pain and the loneliness rather than allow love to get to me. I could give love all day, all night long, no worries, because that feels great. That feels great. And that always feels great. But you know what? That doesn't always feel great. I'm gonna, I just now, I'm gonna correct myself. That does not always feel great. Because as I learned was that, um, through this whole process, was that, you know, giving love to people who are not receptive to love is really painful. It's really, really painful. It's basically like your love is shooting out at them and it's shooting at this, like at the bark of this tree. Like it's just hitting it, but only hitting the surface as if it's like an armor and it's like flying back at you. Well, I'm also not wanting to really receive love, so I don't want that shit. Pardon me. But um, yeah, so it's not penetrating. And so you're like, well, what the heck, man? I'm giving you love. Don't you want this love? Well, no, because they're just like you. You're a mirror. They're mirroring you, goofball. They're, you know, you don't want to receive love. Why should they want to receive love? And so 
you know, there it is. I, uh, it was, it's painful to not be able to give the love and have it be received. And so if you want things to not be painful, to not be in this suffering, to not be in this isolated feeling and feeling like you're just in complete desolation and uh, despair and that you have absolutely not a soul in this world who gives a rip about you, then you need to start opening up your heart. You need to start, you know, letting that love in because there are people all around you. Oh, you know what else happened? So yesterday, here's another story, sorry, it's really going long. But yesterday I said, okay, Michael, I was talking to Archangel Michael and um, because I was listening to Wes's podcast and he was telling his Michael stories and I have a lot of Michael stories too. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe these dark thoughts are coming from, you know, the dark entities, malignant forces that or malefic forces that don't want me to shine my light because, you know, love is really the super sauce. Love is the super, super, super sauce for everything. Like whenever you have fear, what do you counter it with? Love. Boom. Right at them. You have dark entities. What do you do? Love. Boom. Blast them with love. Gone. Okay, so they don't want, they see all of this magnanimous love that I have in me. And what happens if I'm going to feel love is that love inside of me is going to amplify. And so I was like, okay, yes, I do need to call on Archangel Michael. And I used to always keep the 91st Psalm written under my bed, under my pillow. Well, that is the Psalm of protection. I highly recommend that you write it out, write it in red ink, preferably on yellow paper and put it under your bed. The spirits can't see red ink on yellow paper, supposedly. It resonates, so I do it. And so I did that, that felt good. And then I asked Archangel Michael and Mother Mary and Yeshua to again walk with me throughout my day and show me, show me how I am loved. Show me the love. And what did they do? They came in in force. You have no idea. So I get to work at Whole Foods and every single person through my line was showing me the love. I could see it in their eyes. They were so happy to see me. Some verbally said that they were happy to see me. I had a lady that I know from my soul tribe. She came through, was not even knowing that she was coming through my line. And here I was. She's telling everybody at work all these beautiful, wonderful things about me. <laughs> Taking my picture and posting it on Facebook with all these, again, more wonderful things, sentiments. And then I had uh, another lady come through my line saying, Oh my gosh, Julie, I'm so happy to see you. And, you know, it's always so good to see you. You're always having so, such a beautiful smile on your face and you're always have some kind word to say. And just with so many people, even my boss was coming up to me and people just wanted to talk to me and they just wanted to just be with me. They just, um, you know, I was like, all of a sudden, everybody had this, I was like, <sighs> all about me. And it was really kind of bizarre. It was beautiful. It felt great. It felt so warm and loving. And I mean, that's, that's a testament for the divine showing up and also for the healing that had been done, the things that I had released. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so there was that. Yep. So to summarize, to wrap all of this all up, it all happens to start with you, you know? Um, so what Archangel Michael and Jesus and Mother Mary were showing me was that love is always all around me. You know, it's the story that I had created, the story I created of not being wanted, of being a castaway, of you know, all of those things that I mentioned before, I created that story. And so therefore that is the reality that I was living and the muck that was building up inside of me. And 
and it's time now to rewrite that story. I now see that I have a beautiful soul tribe of sisters that do love me, that all I have to do is reach out, and I have a wonderful team of healer friends, again, all around me, many states worth of healers, and you know, I don't know where you're watching this from, maybe you're in another country even, and um, I met healers in Ireland when I was visiting, and uh, you know, love is all around. We are not caught up in our separateness. We are not alone. We are all connected. The energy is all connected, but sometimes you just really have to get out of your own damn way, you know? You stop being such a stubborn head, and ask for help. You know, the, you know, Jesus and Mary and the angels, they can't come and help you unless you ask. It's kind of like a rule. And, you know, it is true that if you, whatever you put out, you get back. It's the law of reciprocity. So be mindful of what you put out. Um, I'm putting out love. I want to get love. But if I am not open to it, if I'm not open to receiving love, well, you know what? I'm not gonna receive it. My energy field is not gonna accept it. There's a lesson from Bashar, who is also a channeled being, um, where it's, he says that all of the things that we want in this world are swirling all around us and um, Abraham Hicks talks about this too. It's all in our vortex. Everything is already here. Whatever you want, the millions of dollars, the beautiful house, the love, the whatever, those are all material things except for the love, but they're all already here. It is our blocks, it is our shields, it's our resistance that keeps us from those things. So this is where the work is. And so this is why I required that deep quantum healing because I was really, really standing in my way and I really needed to go deep. I needed to know on a deeper level what was um, holding me back. Why was I not receiving the things that I really wanted to receive? I just, I just wasn't getting it. And so, you know, spirit then was like, okay, well, I'm gonna bring you to someone who can help you. I'm gonna bring you to someone who you can trust and I'm gonna bring you to someone who is capable of doing that deep healing, of basically like shaking the crap out of you and waking you up to, to love. And so, um, and to receiving love and to being open to receiving love. And that's a really powerful healer that's able to do that. So I uh, thank you once again to healer Wes Coons, Reiki master, uh, quantum healer, author, and podcaster. And so that's my healing journey. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you um, get something out of it and that it helps empower you and strengthen you. And I hope that you also see that you are not alone, that you do matter. And you know, you have a team of people around you. You have a spirit team around you also that is very supportive of you and who loves you. And all you have to do, you know, is tap into these resources, tap into your tools, tap into those that you know that you know, you are not being a pain, you are not being a burden to ask. And I know it's hard to ask. It's so hard to ask for help. But if you do it, that's, that's the only way you're, you know, you're gonna feel the love. You've, you, by not asking for the help, you're not allowing someone to give to you and to give you what you really need. So at the core of it, it is your resistance to letting other people in, your resistance to letting other people love you. And so with that, I'm going to leave you now. 
my arm is getting really tired. Um, I love you all so very much. And I'm so very grateful for you. If you want to leave me a comment, please do down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe because I know that I'm not really very consistent with these posts. But when I'm called to do them, they're usually a pretty big message. So feel free to subscribe. And I'll catch you on the, on the flip side. I love you so very much. I love you. Bye.